working beef. That's interesting. So what's up everybody? Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Z900. I've just owned it six months. I got it in, let's see, August. And it is now March. So she just turned six months old. And so far, it's been great. So I'm going to get to a little spot over here and tell you some of the things I like. A couple things you might want to know if you're thinking about buying one. And some other things I've found out since I got mine that I kind of wish I had known. So I'll see you when we get there. So, this is my 2018 Kawasaki Z900 that I bought in August of 2018. It is now March of 2019. So she is six months old, just about, for me. A little over, I think. So, first thing that I really like about this bike is the overall riding position. I'm a short person, so it has a fairly low seat height, so I can get both feet on the ground. Um, the bars are, the bars make the riding position fairly relaxed. You're not, you know, leaned over or anything. And it just, it feels good to ride. It feels sporty, um, but not like you're hunched over on a super sport. Um, it, to me, it's a perfect balance. Some of the other naked bikes, like the FZ09, MT-09 now, uh, felt a bit too upright to me. They felt like a big dirt bike. Um, this feels like a sport bike um, to me. feels like more what I was used to. I had a Ninja 300 before this, but it had clip-ons and a couple other things to... It was kind of like set up like a, a little bit more aggressively than it was stock, which I liked. Um, but this is pretty much perfect for what I was looking for. I mean, I don't I don't really do track days. I don't ride 10 tenths. This is a, you know, around town, have fun city bike for me. So, this was perfect. So, first thing is the riding position. It's sporty, but, you know, not too sporty. And it's relaxed, but not too relaxed. It's right in the middle. And I'll get some shots of me cruising around the parking lot so you can see my body position. second thing that I love about this bike is the looks. I think this is one of the best looking naked bikes on the market right now, especially if you do some slight modifications to it, like put bar in mirrors and 
some other stuff, but the green frame. And now for 2019, they came out with like a candy red frame with red wheels. And if I can, I'll post a picture of that up in this video. But that color scheme looks great. I saw that in the dealership, but that wasn't available when I got this. <clears throat> Otherwise, I probably would have tried to get that one. But I love the green. Um, I get a lot of compliments on it. And um, it just stands out. And it's, you know... I always had a red Kawasaki, so it's kind of nice to have a green one. I'll take a walk around so you can see the other side. It's a little dirty right now. The pollen's horrible. So. The looks. That's number two. Number three. I'm going to go ahead and say is the power. <clears throat> the power on this is just perfect. It has more than you'd ever need. But, um, unlike the FZ09 or MT09, it doesn't just try to wheelie all the time. The wheelbase and the geometry is such that it'll just stay planted and just bolt forward, which I like a lot more than having a wheelie machine. But the, the overall power band is easy to use. You have to really open the throttle up, you know, a decent amount to get power so you know it's not a real touchy throttle at all um, it's real easy to manage um, even for somebody that's not that experienced which is really nice for the level of power that it has but man once you it the throttle is misleading because you you tend to ride it around never cracking it past halfway or so for a couple days and you know it just doesn't feel really all that fast but then You'll find an open stretch of road or something, you'll crack it past where you normally do, and it just surprises you, because it has way more than you're expecting, which is really nice. So I would say number three is the power band. Number four is going to kind of go hand in hand with that, and that's the sound. Now, um, all I have is this Pro Race slip-on. It still has its giant bread box catalytic converter and its stock headers. So, it's not, um, it could be, it could sound a lot better without the catalytic converter. But that's de further down the road when I get a full system because I'd really like to tune it at the same time, even though a lot of people say that these bikes will not run lean, even with a full system, which is pretty amazing. And that you don't have to run a fuel controller. But I just would prefer it to be correct. But the sound is really, um, on point. Because it's a four sill. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong, the triple, I love the way the MT09 sounds. And the reason I keep bringing that up is because that's pretty much this bike's chief competitor, is the MT09. Um, it's pretty much the exact same price. Um, a lot of people cross shop these. Some of the other naked bikes are, you know, n either they don't have a comparable model like the GSXS, the Jixus only has a 750 and a a 600 and 750 and a 1000, just like the their sport bikes. So the only other thing, the only other company that makes a 900 that's even in the same price range, because the street triples and that kind of stuff are much more expensive than this. And some of the other naked bikes that are from the European models are much more expensive. So that's you know the most common comparison that people make is with the MT09, which has that beautiful triple whistle, which I love. <clears throat> I've never owned a triple. I really wanted to. I tried to buy an MT-09, but it just didn't work out. And I'm glad it didn't, because I love this bike. Um, I don't think I would have been as happy with an MT-09, but I don't know. So, anyway, the sound, and I'll, of course I'll post some clips, but that's that would be number four.
I'm going to have to say that number five, my favorite thing about this bike, is the overall build quality. Um, it's just, you know, having some a few things apart just to do simple maintenance, like taking the sprocket cover off, cleaning the chain, um, undoing this rear axle bolt to adjust the chain. Um, they put the big nut on this side so you're not breaking the the large nut axle nut loose on the upside. It's on the kickstand side, which is really nice. Um, just the way the sprocket cover they used, they used it to hide those tubes and they put it out in the bottom where you can't see it. Um, they this covering, you know, really covers everything. The green frame, the welds are beautiful. The powder coating is done really well. If you look in here, just everything is placed like they thought about servicing. Um, and everything comes off easily. They use a lot of a lot more bolts than those push clip things. So you can just take, you know, two Allens out, like for this plate, for instance, and it only has two two or three of those pull tab things where they go, it's like a, a protruding thing that goes into a rubber hole. They don't use nearly as many of those as, you know, like a full fairing sport bike, of course. But, you know, the, the plastics that you do, that you would have to take off to this, the plastics that it does have, that you can tell somebody put a lot of thought into it. And the other really nice thing is that the oil drain bolt is on this side of the engine case on the bottom. So you can, on my Ninja 300, it was on the opposite side. So you had to level the bike to drain the oil and then tilt it the other way to drain the rest of it. <clears throat> Whereas this bike will pretty much drain completely on its side stand. You can do the entire oil change and just rock it vertically to get the rest of the oil to drain. But the rest of the time, you just leave it on the side stand. The oil filters on this side um, out of the way of the exhaust. The exhaust runs under the bike on the other side. So therefore, you're not spilling oil on the exhaust and all that stuff. It's just, it's all really nice to work on. So I would have to say that the build quality, you know, just judging by the fit and finish of the, the what you can see, is really, really good. I mean, you just look in here, the way everything's packaged, everything is run through little brackets and cable holders and stuff like that. You got a little cable holder here. I mean, all back in here is neat and tidy. I don't like the horn just being out here like that, but most bikes are like that. These little covers are easy to take off. Here's what, You can see what I mean about the oil filter and the exhaust. How it's totally not in the way. The oil will just drain the path of least resistance, which is the way the bike's already leaning. So those are the five things I love about this bike. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you want. Hit that bell. There'll be more videos coming soon.